Hi, my name is Jason and I'm an application engineer here at 3M. Today we're going to be talking to you about dry guide coat. It's going to be a short video with little tips on how to use it, when to use it, and what we should use it for. Before we begin, I just want to cover a couple of things. The first thing is we want to make sure we're always wearing the appropriate PPE. In this video, I'll be wearing nitro gloves, safety glasses, a particulate respirator, and hearing protection. The second thing is that this video is intended for professional use, so for you technicians out there in the body shops. For any more information on warranty and safety, be sure to check the link in the description below. So as I said, today we're talking about guide coat. In particular, we're talking about dry guide coat. This is gonna be different than a wet application guide coat. Dry guide coat is what I prefer to use, um, and a lot of technicians do, and I'll tell you a few reasons why. Dry guide coat is a powder, so anytime it's on the pad, you can see you can kind of move it around. It uses this sort of sponge-like applicator to go onto the panel, and it makes that area we're gonna be working on a little bit darker. What dry guide coat does is it actually pushes down into any little sand scratches or pinholes that may be in the body filler. So as we start sanding, we can see all of those things underneath. If we were to use a wet guide coat, sort of the kind you can find in an aerosol can, that kind of sprays big black dots of guide coat onto the panel, which may be larger than a pinhole. So if that hits right on top of a pinhole, it'll actually bridge the gap instead of going down inside of that pinhole like a powder does. And as we start to sand, we'll sand that bridge off and think the pinhole's gone when it's actually still there. It's the same for sand scratches. If you were to magnify a sand scratch, that wet guide coat might bridge all the way across the top where those little dry particles are gonna get inside of there. So as we start sanding this down, it's still gonna be black at the bottom of that and we know we haven't finished sanding yet. So that's why I prefer a dry guide coat over a wet. To apply to a panel, it's very simple. Turn it over to get some of the powder up on the applicator. You can give it a spin to knock off the excess and then just simply rub it around on the areas that we're gonna sand. In this case today, we're gonna be sanding on top of a 2K glaze um, that we just put on a black panel for demonstration purposes. So now that we have our guide coat on, I'm gonna start with a coarser grit paper, just like you would on a repair. In this case, we're gonna be using 80 grit on a block, and you're gonna see how quickly we can see where the low spots may be on the panel. So as you can see, after guide coat is applied and we start sanding, we can very quickly see any low spots that may be on the panel. And obviously they show up as darker than the rest where we've sanded the guide coat off. It also gives us a really good picture of what our scratch profile looks like. Again, we are using 80 grit, so this is a very coarse scratch profile. Wet guide coat will also do this. But again, it won't get down into the scratches. So for this first bit of sanding, maybe it works fine. But as you'll see now, let's say we blocked this out and now we're ready to move on to our finer grit paper. I'm gonna reapply my guide coat. So again, turn over the canister, knock over the excess, and I'll rub this one more time. Now as I start to sand this with the DA in finer grade paper, you'll really be able to see the sand scratches that I just put in with my 80 grit where a wet guide coat wouldn't show you that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some 180 grit on the DA, and I'm gonna sand this down a little bit so you can see those sand scratches underneath. So this is a great example of where dry guide coat could really save us from some rework or some issues with our job at the end when we finish painting it. So if we didn't use guide coat, this center section may look like it's sanded enough. I realize there's still stuff around the outside. We're gonna use that later in the video. But in the center section, you can still see, since I guide coated it, some really fine line scratches. That's the bottom of those 80 grit scratches, the very peak of that little valley at the bottom. If we didn't use guide coat, this would be the exact same color of what's on top of it, and it would be very invisible to our eye. 
The same now if I were to take 80 grit and go right back over the center with no guide coat. Even though I sanded this, we can't see any sand scratches there. We need to be much finer than that to fill those with primer. And we would have missed those if we didn't use guide coat. So if I rub guide coat right back over the top, you can already start to see the sand scratches, but let me clean up the excess on top. Now, if we look closely, we can really see those inline scratches. And I can take it a step further and move to a finer grit paper. So now I'm gonna be using 320 grit. <clears throat> and I'm gonna lightly sand the top of this to get rid of the guide coat on top. And once again, you'll really be able to see that scratch profile of the 80 grit underneath. So now you can see after I've sanded with my 320, we have some very defined 80 grit scratches right in the center of my repair area. That again, without that guide coat would have been completely invisible. This could have gone over to primer and the painter could have primed it, not knowing that these little valleys were stuck in there. A month or two down the road after it's painted, that primer could have sunk into that, leaving those sand scratches, and we might have to repaint that vehicle. So guide coat is a great way to keep you from missing those things and make sure we have the best possible quality and catch as much as we can before we cover our repair with primer. We want to use guide coat not only with our straight line scratches, but every part of the repair process when we switch to a finer paper. Straight line scratches are really obvious, especially with guide coat, but when we use them on a DA, since they're not in a straight line, they're a little bit harder to see but 80 grit on DA paper still leaves a very coarse profile that we need to get out with fine, finer paper before we can move to primer. So now for our second example, on the other side of this panel, I'm gonna sand this down a little bit with 80 grit on a DA. I'm gonna apply some guide coat and then I'm gonna switch to finer paper and sand it again so you can see the scratch profile that's left behind that we wouldn't have seen if we did not use guide coat. So I have some guide coat on there already I'm gonna to switch to my 80 grit paper. We're gonna sand this down just a little bit, but I wanna leave some of that glaze behind so we can reapply guide coat. So I'm gonna get this sanded, apply my guide coat, switch to a finer paper, and sand one more time. Okay, so now that we've sanded with 80, applied our guide coat, and then sanded with 320, you can really see the scratch profile left behind by the 80 grit sandpaper. We see a lot of those little pigtails and curly cues. And remember with 80 grit, those are really deep scratches. So again, if we were to prime right over that, that primer would eventually sink in and possibly shrink, causing us to have to repaint this vehicle if it was actually out on the road. So try to use guide coat as often as you can. Make sure you use it every time you switch grits of sandpaper to make sure you fully sanded out the coarser grit scratches before you move on to your next step and eventually over to primer. So one other place that guide coat is incredibly helpful is on the paint side. So here we used it on the body side when we're getting something ready for primer, but a lot of places it's missed is on the prep side. And this is crucial with the really fine metallics that are used in some of the paints today, especially the really fine paint colors like 46V or 46G from Mazda that uses an incredibly finely ground metallic. So if we were gonna paint this panel with 46G or 46V and this was a blend panel, the first thing we always have to do is scuff our edges. Uh, so let's say we did that with a pad Anytime we're scuffing our edges, we're putting in straight line scratches. So a lot of times we'll do it on the tops of the fender, all of the edges all the way around, and then of course our body lines, and sometimes our arches. 
Anytime we're sanding by hand, those inline scratches may be so coarse that the metallics fall into those and we see them in the final paint job after it's clear coated. Guide coat can be an excellent tool to rub over that before we final sand with our DA to make sure we remove those straight line scratches and we get a much better looking paint job. Now that I have straight line scratches in the panel, I'm gonna put on my PPE, I'm gonna grab my cleaning disc on the Festool and clean off the sanding dust. I'm gonna guide coat it the same exact way I guide coated the uh, glaze before. And then I'm gonna switch to my thousand grit sandpaper and start sanding and you'll actually be able to see the sand profile left behind from my straight line scratches. So as you can see, our straight line scratches, now that we've DA'd the area with our finer grade abrasive, they really stand out. So again, think this is a really technical color, one with a really finely ground metallics in it. If we didn't use guide coat, we wouldn't know that those scratches are still there. And if we didn't fill them by doing a wet bed or something like that, our metallics would definitely fall into those sand scratches and they would show up in the final result, definitely causing a repaint in this case. So again, just one more reason to use guide coat and one more place we can use it. So it's not just for the body side. Guide coat is something that I'm always gonna recommend for the paint side as well. Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you learned a few tricks around dry guide coat. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you want more content like this, be sure to check us out online at 3M Collision Repair Academy, which I left a link to in the description below. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.